this series of videos I'm designing a Z80 based computer system. So far I've gone through the basics of designing the video output circuits, I've designed the core of the CPU system, so it includes the DRAM control, the Z80 uh, itself, the memory decoding, and in a previous video we looked at the original prototype for the video output board which was this one and um, but I decided I didn't like the format of the text output it was 80 by 24 um, display format so it was 80 columns and 24 rows of text and I didn't really like that it didn't work too well with the monitor even though that's what the monitor or the system used this monitor came from um, it was kind of uh, cramping up the text and um, there weren't really enough rows so I've modified it I've done a second version of the design it does require quite a few changes um, but what I have now is a version that supports uh, 64 columns and 30 rows and also allows us to use 128 bytes of the SRAM uh, for non-volatile storage which we'll use in the final design of the computer. I mentioned that I was using this small board to test the original um, video output board and it was just sending some uh, characters to the screen and uh, I was using it to try and determine um, if the system was working correctly. So I'm going to use this again, I've modified it a bit and um, what it's going to do is it will start by clearing the display because when we power it up of course the um, SRAM is just full of garbage so we will of course need to clear that out. It will then um, write characters uh, to each row of the display so it will do that for all 30 rows and then it will clear um, the screen and put a couple of words of text up. Uh, so I'll get this powered up. Um, I've got it running very slow at the moment because I'm trying to keep an eye on the display and make sure that uh, we're not getting any rogue characters, anything uh, peculiar going on. So um, what I'll do is I'll power this up. You'll see it start up. You'll see these LEDs at the bottom here flashing away uh, as the data is output to the board and then I'll uh, move the camera and let you observe what's going on with the display. But what we should see is the display clear and then uh, characters appear. There will be some artifacts on the display because um, this board is updating the SRAM asynchronously. Now it is um, controlling access to the SRAM so it's not just kind of blundering in and, and forcing itself on the SRAM. But because it's only a single port RAM, the video system can't access it at the same time that we're trying to write to it. So just for a few microseconds, um, the video output is disrupted and that manifests itself on the display as little white uh, flecks and artifacts on the display output. Um, in the final design of the computer, then what we'll do is only refresh the SRAM during the retrace period. That will actually be a hardware function of the electronics. That is the reason that this buffer chip was fitted into the video system. It allows the data from the SRAM to be buffered and then while the uh, data is being serialized and sent through to the display, we can use that uh, low in the uh, activity from the SRAM to update it if any writes to it are pending. But at the moment it's just writing and interrupting the, um, the output from the video and as I said we'll see that as some artifacts on the uh, display. Also this um, pick is running about 50 times more slowly than the Z80 will so it's far worse with this. You might even find that um, the uh, artifacts wouldn't be visible in the final design but we'll synchronize it when we get around to that part of the design anyway. So um, I'll get this powered up, move the camera and uh, let you see what's going on. So it's now running, I'll dim the lights, move the camera and you should see the screen updating. It 
So you will notice that the last character on each row is changing during the process. It's uh, intentional, that's so that I can test the um, output from the control board and it just um, writes the last character a couple of times. It doesn't do it on the rest of the test, it's just on that first screen and that's so I can check what's going on uh, with the logic analyzer and the scope. So what we should see now is the text for each line being cleanly output. We shouldn't get any rogue characters and it's now going to write one character at a time for the entire uh, memory space, the video memory space. You can probably see the um, white flashes and artifacts. Like I said, that's because we are just uh, updating the display without regard for where in the video output um, the system is. And that will go away if we synchronize the um, SRAM writes with the retrace because uh, those will effectively be uh, blanked out. Uh, but chances are they wouldn't show anyway because the um, Z80 would be updating so much more quickly. It's taking about 15 microseconds for each update at the moment, whereas with the Z80 it will only take a fraction of a microsecond. So we're getting towards the end of the screen now. If you can see any banding or flickering on the display, uh, as ever, that's just the camera shutter speed. It's not evident in real life. And uh, I still have a few adjustments to make on the display yet. It needs the image raising and the uh, linearity setting. The bottom row is a little bit cramped. So it's now going to clear the display. And as you can see, it's working just fine. So I'll move the camera back. So that's the video output system pretty much sorted now. Uh, we can write to it. I have tried reading as well and the read works uh, without any issues. So we can read back the value. Um, we can display a cursor. And again, I'll come back to this once we get the Z80 hooked up. And so the uh, cursor control mechanism is also working. So um, in essence, everything on the video output is now working the way it's supposed to. I quite like the display format. It's kind of what I wanted and uh, should work well for us. Um, but what we have to do next is hook this up to the Z80. And then of course we need to start writing some test code for the Z80. Um, but really I need some way to interact with this once we get the test code up and running. And so the next thing I need to look at in terms of the hardware is a keyboard. And uh, I gave a lot of thought to this because uh, keyboards are one of the uh, kind of grey areas when it comes to designing a system like this. And I could have gone the whole way and designed a, a complete keyboard from scratch, um, but really I want to make this design accessible to anyone that wants to play along at home and build their own version. And the cost of the keyboard, if it was a, um, a custom design, would be fairly prohibitive. You'd be looking at probably over a thousand pounds for each one because of the small numbers that uh, I would likely be able to sell. So I decided not to go that route. It would have been interesting, but um, as I say, it would have been uh, prohibitively expensive. So what I'm going to do instead is use a PS2 keyboard. Um, it's a bit newer than I would really like for this type of uh, project. Uh, they were brought out in the mid to late uh, 1980s, so still vintage um, equipment. Uh, but uh, it's better than using something like a Bluetooth keyboard. It will still be keeping uh, the general feel for our design. And also I'll design an interface that uses uh, logic gates and so it won't interfere too much with the general concept that we're trying to aim for here, which is a vintage computer system. But it will be uh, something that most people should be able to get their hands on fairly easily and the interface circuits for PS2 are extremely easy to implement anyway. So we can do that with just a few gates. And that's what we'll look at in the next video. We'll put together a small circuit so we can uh, interface to a PS2 keyboard. And once we've got that working, we can start assembling the uh, Z80 system and the video output. And hopefully we can start um, getting our computer to come to life.